I ended up graduating with about $32,000 in student debt and no real way of making serious money to pay it off. I was studying English and history. I applied to 25 paid newspaper internships. I got rejected. So I was desperate. Through a friend, I found out about this job up in Northern Alaska. At the time, I was pushing carts at the Home Depot, so I thought, if I'm gonna do menial labor, why not go all the way up to Coldfoot, Alaska? I got a job as a lodge cleaner, as a cook, as a dishwasher, a tour guide. At first, I was depressed. I just went to school for four years. I graduated with a ton of debt, and yet I can't earn more than 10 bucks an hour. I felt stuck. I thought I might be in debt for my whole life. It became the central narrative of my life. Despite being disappointed with not getting a career in journalism, I'd realized I'd accidentally placed myself in an almost ideal situation to pay off my student debt. Jobs up in Alaska, they pay for your room and board. I didn't need a vehicle up there. There was no cell phone service, so I couldn't even have a phone up there. I didn't have a computer. My friends cut my hair, I got my clothes from a donation bin. Eventually I was able to pay off my $32,000 debt in about two and a half years. Alaska had me questioning how we do everything in American society, how we transport ourselves, how we shelter ourselves, how we feed ourselves, how we live. These were lessons I would take into the next phase of my life. I wanted to go back to college. I promised myself that I would not go back into debt. That required me to think, Radically, I thought of my Alaska journey and the people I met. Hey, if that guy James could live in his truck up in cold Alaska, I could live in a vehicle in North Carolina. I got accepted into a graduate program at Duke University. I went looking for a van. I found this van for $1,500 and live in it for those couple of years. I removed the middle, I lowered the back seat into a bed, put some sheets over the windows. I was nervous every time a splash of light would come through the windshield. I thought it was the police. They were gonna kick me out, but that didn't happen. I cooked my meals in the van. I took showers in the gym. I stayed warm in my sleeping bag. If there was anything tough, it was just making friends. This was my big secret. I told a lot of white lies to folks who asked where I lived. Rent in that part of North Carolina would have cost me at least $500 a month. And I had my food bill down for the first semester to about $4.34. There's a lot of science programs looking for volunteers. I had my head in an MRI machine for a good deal of that the first semester. They were paying to conduct tests on me. Eventually, I'd get a part-time job as a reading tutor for elementary school kids. That helped me kind of stabilize my finances. Would I recommend it to students who want to avoid student debt or pay off their loans? Absolutely. I moved out of my van 10 years ago. I'm 39 now, and I live a pretty ordinary life in Scotland. I have a house, a wife, a daughter. I'm grateful I paid off my debt fast. I didn't go back into student debt again. If I had, it would have been harder for me to start a family, to buy a home, or to pursue a job as a writer, because it's not easy being self-employed in a creative field. What's my fondest memory of my van dwelling days? I just had so much time, so much freedom. I'd wake up thinking the day is mine. I am seen, are you?